All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So we're up to episode six of The Last of Us HBO show. Um, so, so far, one of the things that I've been saying like each, um, each of my episode reviews is the show uh, continually feels rushed. And, I, and, and that's solidified at this point to me. The, the show is definitely feels a bit expedited. It feels rushed. Um, you know, sometimes it feels like we're watching the like, you know, the Cliff Notes version or the bullet point version of, of The Last of Us with this show. Um, and I just think that when you look at other shows, right, let's take, I don't know, Game of Thrones, for example, even though Game of Thrones has, you know, a, a bunch of killing, which we all love, um, a lot of of the show is literally them is literally just the dialogue and like staying in the moment and letting that moment linger and marinate. And I feel like the, this, you know, the show uh, Last of Us is just like it tries to move on so quick and they just don't let they just don't let the scene, you know, um, have its moment. Um, and, and have, you know, a lot of, it doesn't allow for that dramatic effect of things. It's kind of just like, okay, this happened and say this and then move on. And then this happened and say this and then moved on. And it's not like a stead, it doesn't seem like a steady pacing. You know, it's like, it, it Last of Us is like, it goes like this and then there's like this huge spike and then this is like this for a long time where, you know, yeah, I just think the pacing is just a little bit off because it is rushed and the the ideal number of episodes once again feels like it would have been 12 possibly even 13 but definitely 12 and this could have been budget constraints um that could have been part of it because you're they're not they're i understand when it's the first season a lot of the first seasons for shows are you know feelers right they're feeling out the show they're seeing what the reception is and everything like that because <clears throat> yeah, even though it's it's a very successful game and IP, uh, HBO, I'm sure they weren't just going to shell out any amount of money. I'm sure it wasn't a blank check that they gave to gave to Neil and and and, and Craig. Um, and like the sets that they built, those houses and stuff, that's completely custom custom built like sets and stuff like that. That's not like an actual neighborhood. You know, most of the sets are in the show custom just you know manually uh built just for this show so uh, that's where a lot of the budget went to clearly because it's not like there's like a whole bunch of cg we haven't seen like a whole bunch of cgi uh it's been here and there um probably the most cgi we saw was um was in the last episode but they use a lot of practical effects in and prosthetics in that episode also um <clears throat> so i think Season two will probably be better as far as the pacing goes. They'll probably have, you know, more just the more freedom and, and funding and everything like that to to do it exactly how how they want it. Because, yeah, like I said, feels a bit rushed. But anyway, getting into the episode, <coughs> excuse me. Um, So this is three months later after, you know, Henry and Sam. It's uh, like winter now. Uh, so Joel and uh, Joel and Ellie go into this like couple's cabin that they find out in the in the in the woods and the forest and everything like that. And Joel uses like this, the, you know, the interrogation technique. He doesn't actually like torture them or anything, but he uses the same technique we've seen him uh, use in the in Last of Us in the first game. And we've seen Ellie use it in, in part two, where you get one uh, person um, to mark it, mark the direction where you want to go on the map. Um, but you don't, but the other person doesn't see it. So you, then you ask the other person and they both need to match up and point in the same direction on the map, uh, or you're going to die. Um, <laughs> you're going to probably die anyway, but you know, so that's the inter interrogation technique and it works. Uh, it works very well, works, works very well. I think, uh, I think Tommy used it also in Last of Us Part Two. We saw, yeah, we saw Ellie use it. We saw Tommy, Tom, Tommy used it because you know, um, I think it was Tommy that Ellie in, in, in Part Two, Ellie when they went into that room and they saw the two people tortured. That was, I believe, that was uh, Tommy who did that. And this couple was actually funny, by the way. Um, they were, 
a funny couple. Uh, so they, you know, they get the directions, they they leave and everything like that. Uh, Joel starts having panic attacks because like he's scared for Ellie now. He's suffering from PS uh, PTSD. You know, since he's started to care for Ellie, you know, that's when he started to have like these panic attacks and moments of like weakness and being overwhelmed. Um, they talk, so they leave that place. They talk by, you know, this fireplace. Their relationship is kind of like solidified at this point. Joel it, it clearly cares for Ellie, but he's like, he he's fine with the role of being like this grumpy old man who shows that he cares in, in different ways. And Ellie, and Ellie is, you know, she's not bothered by it anymore. Um, she just realized, you know, that's just how Joel is. And she just laughs at it. And she's, she's like, you know, yeah, this is just uh, the grumpy old um, protector. So she's, she's accepted, accepted it at, at this point. And I guess the, the chemistry, you know, that's the chemistry and it works. In the game, Joel does have <clears throat> a bit more variety of emotions and, and the way he delivers the lines like it's not just that like he's much more you know pedro pascal's is a lot more monotone i i would say uh kind of like me um a lot more monotone in this one um where a lot of his lines are delivered in in the exact same way it is jo it is joel but it's like one side of joel that he does the entire time almost um, Ellie's worried about if the vaccine will work, you know, that's weighing on her, on her mind when she finally gets to the, uh, fireflies. Joel continues to teach Ellie different things, you know, they're, they're bonding and, you know, speak and talking. They get to the dam, um, the, the dam scene, you know, where Joel, in the game, Joel attempts to explain how it works and this one, he doesn't even bother, you know, he knows Ellie's gonna ask. Uh, and then, so when they're past the dam, crossing this bridge, um, that the couple warned them about, by the way, uh, they, they get, uh, ambushed by patrols from, from Jackson. Um, and you know, they got to check them out, make sure, you know, check on who they are, make sure they're not infected. You know, of course, that's how Jackson does it. As we know, they, they're very self-sustaining. They send people out on patrols. They protect the town and everything like that. Uh, so interesting callback to, episode one of the last of us if you remember episode one the dog in episode one was looking at the old lady very strangely and i'm like and i said that i said in my episode one review i said they're doing that for a reason i i wonder if they're gonna bring it up later that somehow dogs have the ability to detect or smell infected and they can so they can't smell the infection. That doesn't make sense, obviously, but they can smell like the rotting flesh um, and, and the change uh, and, and what and what results from the change of the infection. Right. Because it wouldn't make sense for dogs to just smell sick, now, even though there's like certain things like, you know, uh, and anecdotally in real life about dogs being able to smell cancer and, and stuff like that. I, I'm what, what I'm pretty sure uh, what they what they established is that the dogs can smell the rotting flesh uh so and that's i think that's pretty cool that wasn't in the game obviously of course we had dogs in part two but it was they couldn't like smell rotting flesh or anything they, they were just used to smell uh you know um strangers and and stuff like that to detect strangers so i think that's a that's a pretty cool thing that they um that they've utilized dogs uh to, to check for infection um since they don't have the scanners like like fedra does um so that's cool um so joel started kind of almost starts to have another, like another panic attack for ellie you know when the dog is about to search her because you know he thinks the dog is going to detect uh that she's in, she's in, or well she's not infected but has been bitten but once again she doesn't have rotten flesh so dog uh, doesn't detect anything uh maria maria asks joel his name he real she realizes that that's Tommy's brother, takes him back to Jackson. Joel meets Tommy. Uh, and, you know, they all sit down, have a, a little conversation. We see a uh, somebody in the in pass by, one of the kids, looks kind of grown, actually. But she looks very much like Dina. And Neil Druckmann even commented on, on, on Twitter to everybody asking, is that Dina? And he didn't really answer. But he didn't, didn't deny it either. 
So it, it might be Dina, but Dina is supposed to be more around Ellie's age. And that that girl looks, I would say, significantly older. <laughs> so I'm not I don't know. I, like I said, you, they don't put anything in these. They don't just put anything in these shows for no reason. Everything is for a reason. Hence the dog, you know, the, the, the dog in episode one. And now the payoff uh, for the dog's reaction in episode one is paying off in episode six. So that ha I'm guessing that has to be Dina. Um, because otherwise, you know, why would they do that? But also, why is Dina so much older? Don't know. We'll see. Uh, Joel. Oh, yeah. So Joel learns that Tommy and Maria are married. And I don't I don't necessarily understand his reaction. I don't. Yeah, I don't really get his reaction to that. Like he, he seemed kind of upset. <laughs> like it was his look was very Trump supporter ish. Like even. Ellie is like telling him to say, hey, can, say congratulations. What's wrong with you? So, yeah, I didn't really understand the reaction necessarily. Um, like why he was upset about that. I, I I know later on, like he's he's a little bit upset when he realizes that Maria is s seemingly the one who kept him off the radio because that was one of their rules when you come to Jackson. Um, so I get him being upset about that, but just learning that tommy's married didn't really understand his his reaction of why he was upset maybe because he wasn't there he you know he's he's been out of tommy's life i guess i, I didn't really i didn't really get it uh tommy talks about how he can like hedge land headshots on infected from like a mile away how he's how he's like this godlike sniper and that's like a a reference to last of us part two and because ellie El, uh you know bella ramsey El, bella ramsey's A ellie ask uh if he can teach her and that's something that actually happens in part two so that's like a uh a, a reference to uh that scene in, in in part two um and maria and tommy are just explaining how like uh jackson is self is self-sustaining how they have electricity plumbing all that good stuff everybody you know works and, and chips in and they, they have a, a thriving uh, just working community and all that stuff it's 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 a it's something that resemble resemblance normalcy um so tommy and joel you know they have this little conversation in the bar uh he's still lying about tests at this point um he asks about the fireflies you know he learns that, that they're, they have a, they're placed at a university um yeah the, the, joel is is kind of mad that uh maria has been keeping him off the radio uh tommy tells joel that maria is pregnant he's going to be a father not something that was in the game um interesting interesting choice no problem with that that marie is pregnant and tommy's gonna be a father uh joel is and, and he's also kind of bitter and angry that um tommy's having a child probably because sarah you know it, it's kind of like a, a mirror like joel lost his child uh when the, the world was at least semi-normal when things were going to shit and then in this world, Tommy is now having a child. He, you know, he has his wife. He's about to have his child. So Joel is like a little bit bitter and salty about that. Um, so he doesn't really congratulate him on the marriage, doesn't congratulate him on, you know, um, having a child. None of that, really. Um, and he starts to have like more panic attacks when he sees somebody's hair that resembles Sarah. Uh, so, yeah, Joel's a mess. He's a mess. Um, so Ellie takes a shower, right? And, and Maria like just gives her a, a diva cup. A lot of people didn't know what this is. Um, I know what this is because I have a wife. Um, so a diva cup is just a feminine product. Like it, it's it's if you don't want to use like a tampon or a pad, uh, essentially it's a reusable um, uh, feminine hygiene product where you literally just, uh, you know, when a woman is, is menstru menstruating, uh, you literally can just wash it out and, and reuse it because of the material it's made out of it's meant to be uh cleaned and, and reused uh which this is this i i find it interesting because this is like the second time where they've addressed uh feminine hygiene um in this post-apocalyptic world right because i've said i said it before in most other shows they just like ignore this fact this this factor of like yo how are women dealing with this in, the, in this world where they don't just have easy access to feminine products you assume they're using some type of rag or something like that but i think it's uh pretty mature and pretty cool that they're actually addressing this and they have um this uh diva cup that you know um is reusable so yeah that's that's a good thing for uh women to have in, in this type of world um <clears throat> so 
and then so so ellie and, and maria have some type of like bonding time gets to cut her hair ask her about some some things <clears throat> maria was an ada assistant district uh, assistant district attorney um before the world went to hell uh maria's child died um ellie learns that sarah was joel's daughter and she died um i think she wait didn't she i think she knew joel had a daughter but didn't know this didn't know she no did I'm trying to remember because i know how it happened in the game but i guess joel never mentioned it in the show or ellie never mentioned never learned about it in the show this is the first time i guess it's the first time um so ellie learns about sarah um maria seems not seems to not be too fond of joel and she kind of like takes because she like blames joel for the things tommy did uh before coming to jackson and before meeting her when when tommy's a grown man right like yeah we've seen uh some evidence that he's a bit of a follower but he's a grown man and he made those choices so you can't just blame joel like Tommy definitely has accountability when it comes to that. Um, so they seem to not be that fond of each other yet, Joel and, and Maria. Um, so they go to watch this movie in Jackson, you know, a little community time, I guess. Uh, Joel. Oh, so they, you know, Joel, and then Joel and Tommy have this uh, conversation in, in, in this like re repair uh, shed all of this is obviously very different from the from how and when the conversation happened in the game like this happened in the dam right <clears throat> maria mentioned that that they got the dam up and running and fixed like two two or three years ago so yeah this is different from the game where joel ran into maria and tommy at the actual um at that at the actual dam when they were just repairing it excuse me don't know what the hell's going on with my voice uh so he tells so joel joel tells tommy ellie's immune and you know he has to break down uh the whole story he wants tommy to take ellie to the university and uh you know he tells uh tommy can't tell anybody because you know people are gonna shoot her people won't trust it um even when he tells joel tells him that like he gets a little alarmed you know because he has a whole community you know who's who's safe safe there just like just like the people in the tunnels who tried their best to uh prevent infected from getting getting in and um keep their little underground community safe you that's a huge concern in jackson obviously if one person gets infected in, in jackson that could destabilize their whole whole community so yeah um so joel talks about like he's getting weaker and less capable because you know He's older in the show than he than he is in the game. So he talks about, you know, him just being weaker and less capable because he's older. He's partially deaf in one ear. He's suffering from PTSD nightmares. And and he has all these fears of getting Ellie killed and and, and reliving the situation with with Sarah and everything like that. And um, yeah, so he's like he's 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 a mess. He's 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 a physical and 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 mental mess because you know that the, in the episode when they were in Kansas City that kid got the drop on him, and uh, when you know when you think like oh uh, you know even though he's older he should be he you know he should be able to overpower that kid but they're showing you there's some there, there's some chinks in his armor because he's older he's not this invincible guy right um they they seem to be nerfing Joel. Or humanizing him a, a, a little bit uh, so a lot of people not too fond not too happy with that um, but he is only human uh, then we have the you don't know you don't you have no idea what lost scene is when Ellie figures out that Joel is trying to dump uh, her on Tommy and this scene was much what's much better executed in the game I think Bella Ramsey's acting was kind of poor right here and she didn't deliver the lines as well as as the game um so yeah this this scene didn't hit as hard to me in 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 the show yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't as it wasn't as good uh but joel considers and gives ellie a choice and of course she chooses to chooses to go with him um i don't like i don't like how this is another part that just feels rushed like oh you know yeah you know what you deserve a choice and all that eh kind of still feels kind of kind of rushed um and just like i don't know it just doesn't feel right the way they're they're doing it um because like i feel like that part 
where he like changes his mind there's supposed to be a bigger like a bigger uh, event and arc behind that but they kind of like once again cut out a bunch of stuff that that doesn't streamline the story i guess it's whatever though um so once again you know joel t teaching ellie how to shoot some more some bonding time uh some more conversations you know while they're on their way to the university uh, about football uh, about joel being a singer about ellie seeing monkeys for the first time all stuff we you know lines from from the game so they get to the university uh this this <laughs> so they're at the university for maybe five minutes right that's the in, in in the game the university is a much longer and bigger section and they're here for five minutes and they're gone like that's it that's all we get of the university really and it's like once again this is why some fleshed out longer episodes a longer season would have been great because there there should be there, there should be an infected encounter here right with as much like once again all the gameplay that we all the gameplay that we got in the game doesn't have to be in the show we we acknowledge that but the fact that there's no in, infected encounter here and the the raider encounter the human encounter here is also very short-lived they just skip all the you know all the shoot the, the violence and 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 the uh the encounters with the uh w with the raiders that you get in the game um just feels extremely expedited and, and just sped up and rushed once again so what you really what you get is joel is is them sneaking they 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 go into the building uh you know they see the monkeys um they realize there was only monkeys making the noise in in, in the un in university building they see the raiders coming they sneak out uh to get back to their horse the guy sneaks up on joel with a bat ellie you know El ellie uh tells him he ducks the bat breaks right and then after the bat breaks uh on the tree they joel and the guy grapple each other and then when they separate after joel chokes him out you realize that joel has been um sh stabbed because the bat the broken piece of the bat is sharp and it's eff effectively a shank now so instead of the rebar scene we get in the game where joel falls and like lands on rebar and it like pierces him uh through like the side of his abdomen we get him stabbed with the uh sharp uh with the sharp part of the uh, of the broken bat and i'm see i'm fine with the rebar scene not happening because i f i felt like even in the game it was unrealistic for him to survive that i'm like there's no way you're surviving that like i'm, I'm sorry like there's no way that doesn't hit any important organs there's pulling yourself off of that sur getting on a horse um surviving a whole winter and then ellie has to go get antibiotics i'm like yeah it, even even in game world where you have to suspend belief i was i was never like i was like okay with it you know because it's a game but i was like yeah that that wouldn't happen so i'm okay with them changing it to make it more grounded and realistic um but but the way it was done where it's like hidden and censored and it's like oh i've been stabbed like no, I didn't like the execution of it. It's not it's not that he got stabbed this way. It's like it's not that he got stabbed with the with the with this broken part of the bat. It's like how they did it. It's like no, it show it or or do it in a different way. Like it's just I just didn't like the way it was executed. Um but they they get on they get on the horse and they're able to get away while the other raiders are chasing them. Ellie's shooting back at him, and you know, Joel is passing out on the horse from his injuries. And Ellie gotta, Ellie gotta, you know, save him and look out for him and look out for them. So that was the episode. It was an okay episode. Um, I, I don't like episode five is probably definitely gonna stay the best episode of the season, probably. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily have any strong feelings for this episode one way or another i think it was just an okay decent episode but but once again another episode where the choices and the and the changes 
don't necessarily don't really make it better make it worse in certain situations and show still feels kind of kind of rushed but i wonder i wonder for people who are people who are just never played the game and are watching the show i just, i wonder if they feel like it's rushed at all because they probably don't they probably think like oh yes is greatly paced but i don't know uh, maybe i should ask somebody um but that's the episode like i said that's that's how i feel about it it was just okay don't really got much to say about it we're more than halfway through the season we have four what we, we are so this is six so we no we got three we got three left pretty much damn near done so let me know what y'all thought about this episode hit the like button hit the notification bell um follow me on twitter if you're not and uh i will catch y'all on the next video all right i'm out of here peace